The purpose of Safety Links is to provide the public with general safety related information covering the home, businesses, and community with emphasis upon senior citizen related issues, drawing upon existing programs currently being offered by federal, state, and local agencies. A broad based, multifaceted array of subjects will be covered. In addition, contact information will be offered to those seeking direct help or support. And now, on with today's topic. Hello, my name is Tom Hayes. I'm Director of Customer and Community Relations for New Jersey Natural Gas Company, and I'm the current Board President for SCAN. And I welcome, welcome all of you to uh, today's uh, version of Safety Links, which is dealing with uh, disaster relief. And I'm happy to have uh, two guests with us here today. Uh, first, we have uh, Chris McNiff, who's a public uh, information officer for FEMA. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. And we also have Gary Colton, who's the uh, public information officer for the SBA. Hi, Tom. Nice to be here. Yes. Welcome, both of you. appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us. Um, I guess to get started, uh, we have a, a, probably our first question would be, tell me a little bit about FEMA and, and what you do as an organization in general. Okay, when, when there's a, a federally declared uh, disaster by the president, uh, such as Hurricane Sandy here in New Jersey, uh, it activates three programs within FEMA, uh, one being the individual assistance program, one being the public assistance program, and the other being hazard mitigation. Uh, specifically, individual assistance is for individuals and homeowners who have been affected by the storm. Um, naturally, what happens is that when, uh, when we activate the what we call IA, uh, is that uh, people will register with us, uh, people with any type of damage, whether it be whether they feel it's small scale damage or large scale damage, uh, you register with us. Um, there are potential uh, grant monies available for, for those who qualify uh, for temporary housing assistance uh, and for essential home repairs. Um, essential home repairs meaning uh, monies that can bring the condition of your home back to a state where it's safe uh, and livable. Um, or otherwise, if you've been displaced, what we do is we provide uh, rental assistance uh, where, you can, um, where you can find a, an apartment within the area and utilize uh, FEMA grant money to use for that rent while you are either repairing your home or finding another housing plan, um, whether it be moving away from the area or something that's going to get you back into a, a longer term housing condition. Right, okay. Wow. And certainly there's a lot going on with that, with, with Sandy, right? All the, well, uh, Sandy's been very, I mean, it's been very challenging in, in that it was, a, it was really a catastrophic storm uh, that displaced a lot of people. Um, and, you know, and we've taken in, you know, over 250,000 registrations and, and dispersed upwards of $350 million. So far. Uh, so far for the storm. Um, in that housing has been, has been a big challenge for us. Um, in that there has been a number of people who have been displaced. Uh, so in, in this disaster, what we did was that through our, through our individual and public assistance program uh, is we incorporated a temporary sheltering plan um, to where people, uh, sort of the step before they find an apartment to utilize our rental assistance right. is that we've utilized hotels and motels to temporarily shelter people mm -hmm. so they can formulate a plan. And, and get into and get into longer term housing, but again, it's all predicated uh, on registering with FEMA. Um, you know, it, it takes you know you have to work with us, and that um, and if you don't register with us, we don't know that you need any assistance. Right. Um, and some people feel like you know, well, well, I didn't have the damage, uh, you know, great great enough damage that I will qualify for anything. L let us make that determination. Mm -hmm. um, so it's either calling us at our 800 number. Or, or, or visiting the website and registering with us, or visiting one of our disaster recovery centers where we've had four, four open disaster recovery centers in Monmouth and four open disaster recovery centers in Ocean County, um, where we have FEMA uh, individual assistance application specialists there to assist in, in registering people, as well as uh, answering any questions or concerns uh, people may have regarding their application. But again, it's all really all predicated off of registering with FEMA. Right. So that's very important that they just register. Get out there and register. Absolutely. Right? Otherwise, we, otherwise, we have no idea that you need assistance. Right. Um, right. And again, people, people will feel that, well, I have insurance. You know, I won't qualify for this. Uh, even if you do have insurance, register with us. 
even though with, with the sequence of our delivery as far as uh, the individual assistance grant money, is that by law the federal government can't duplicate any benefits. But what we can do is that a lot of times we'll, we'll wait to see what your insurance settlement will be. Um, and, if, you know, and if for some reason that comes up short, Mm -hmm. there, there is FEMA money that's available to, to you know, supplement that insurance money or cover any uh, uninsured items within the home. Great, great. Now, Gary, uh, with the SBA, what, um, yeah, how's your program work? What are the types of things you're involved with? Well, the first thing that always comes up is why the Small Business Administration right. in a disaster, because all we normally work with are businesses right. and helping them develop. But in a declared disaster, such as Sandy, the Small Business Administration actually offers disaster assistance uh, and becomes one of the major providers of funding to help people repair and replace damaged property. In fact, we offer loans for homeowners and renters and businesses of all sizes and private nonprofit organizations. Mm. What we offer basically is for homeowners up to $200,000 to rebuild their home or repair it, for homeowners and renters up to $40,000 to help repair or replace damaged personal property, and that's clothing, furniture, appliances, even a personal automobile if it wasn't covered by insurance. Wow. For businesses in the area of, of all sizes, we offer, and private nonprofit, up to $2, or $2 million to uh, rebuild their buildings, replace damaged equipment, lost inventory. And as part of that, for small businesses and mm -hmm. private nonprofits, we offer what's called an economic injury disaster loan, which allows them to pay their bills, their mortgage, their uh, rent, their fixed debt that they have to service, and salaries for them, their employees while they may be impacted by the storm. For that loan, they do not have to have had physical damage. They simply have to be able to show that because of the storm, the time they were closed or out of business right. or have reduced business, mm -hmm. that it impacted their ability to carry on business as normal gotcha. and pay their bills. So, it's so in the example of Sandy, even though their business might have been totally, you know, untouched and perfect, mm -hmm. if all the homes around them have been, you know, wiped out, then obviously there aren't customers there that are coming to their store or whatever it might be, or certain areas on the Barrier Islands where it's been shut off. Folks haven't been able to even get out there, so all those businesses, I'm, I'm sure, have been shut down, really not because of something they did, but because of, of the storm and the uh, yeah. inability for folks to access those areas. And the reason, that's the reason for those loans, is because in many cases, small businesses don't have a large working capital fund, right. and with reduced revenues or no revenues for a period of time, that working capital can go away very quickly, and so right. that economic injury loan can really help them uh, carry on for several months or even a year or more uh, to stay in business. Wow. So that now, they can recover. Now, do you work alongside FEMA on a regular basis? How does that kind of work between the two organizations? We do. In, in a disaster like Sandy, the SBA comes in with FEMA as a partner. In all of the disaster recovery centers that Chris mentioned, we have people from SBA working. They're there available to answer questions and help people fill out uh, their applications. One thing I might mention is when they register with FEMA, mm -hmm. a lot of people receive by mail a week or 10 days, maybe two weeks later, they'll receive an SBA disaster home loan application in the mail. And they need to fill that application out and return it. Uh, if they don't, they may be excluding themselves from some of FEMA's uh, programs because some of them wait for the return of that SBA and processing of that SBA application. Uh, wow. Because we can't duplicate benefits, that's the way that it gets handled. So people who throw it away definitely need to uh, go into a disaster recovery center and get an application so they can uh, re so they can fill out that application and apply. A lot of people don't want loans. Mm. Uh, the automatic, automatic thought is I can cover it with insurance. I don't need a loan. I don't want a loan. But this is part of the process. And the loan program is flexible enough that even if they're approved for a loan, they sign the paperwork taking the loan, they don't have to ever actually take any of the money from it. And they aren't technically indebted to repay anything until they actually take money. 
uh, the, low, the loan rates are fairly low and allow people to uh, repay up to 30 years. So, Wow, that's great. It's, so it's, it's a just, great program. And it's there if they need it. It's, it's there if they need backup. it. If, if, if they don't need it, at least it's there. They know they're already qualified, so it sort of takes that step out of the picture already. So it does. It, that's and if, great. If for some reason we can't approve the loan, then we s notify FEMA mm -hmm. that their loan application has been received. We were unable to approve the loan for some reason and FEMA immediately puts them back into their grant programs and other needs assistance, making people eligible for that assistance from FEMA. Right. Yeah. And Tom, it's, it's, it's an important distinction here is that, you know, the sort of the, the individual assistance program for FEMA when it comes in, and it's really on a sort of an emergency needs basis in that we're there to provide a roof over your head when you've been displaced or any type of funds that can get you back into your home. Um, the FEMA Individual Assistance Grant Money is not there to rebuild your home. Um, we're not there to, to, to make you whole as you were before the storm. It's really the Small Business Administration that provides the, the bulk of the recovery money uh, to, to rebuild your home. Uh, FEMA is there to make sure that you, are, you have a roof over your head, that you're safe, uh, whether you're in either some transitional sheltering, that you're in, a, in, a, in an apartment that we can provide rental assistance for, or that we can provide uh, monies up front um, that will get you, you know, get your home back into a condition where you can live live in it uh, in, a, in a safe environment. Right. And do you work a lot with like the Red Cross and Salvation Armies and, and those organizations? Or are they totally separate? It, it seems to me I often hear, the, you know, FEMA and say the Red Cross together with some of the disaster centers and things like that. Is that something you, you work together on a regular basis? Or? Right. We'll work okay. in, close, in close conjunction with all those agencies, as well as with the state of New Jersey. Right. Okay. Um, you know, essentially the FEMA's role is, is to support the state of New Jersey in the recovery from Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, we were invited in by the state to support them in their recovery efforts. Um, and, and we work in close coordination with all of the voluntary agencies. Because um, a lot of times they can provide stuff that we can't. Right. Um, you know, they, you know, a lot of times it's not just it's the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, but it would be the Southern Baptists and be other church organizations who come up uh, and provide, uh, provide a lot of vital functions within, within you know, hard-hit neighborhoods, whether it be cooking mm -hmm. meals or, or, or providing uh, different types of sheltering and things like that, um, that, that FEMA can't provide. Um, so we work in close coordination with all of those groups uh, to make sure that all of the survivors' needs are met. That's great, and you guys both really been doing a wonderful job. Um, can I ask you maybe just to give us some contact information, uh, maybe starting with FEMA, so it's, folks you know. We'll, you know sure, we we can be reached at one eight hundred six two one three three six two, and that spells FEMA, or disasterassistance.gov. Okay, great, Gary. SBA? And of course, people call FEMA to register first. And then after that, they can reach the SBA at 1-800-659-2955. Or they can go on our uh, website at www.sba.gov and follow the links for disas disaster assistance. Gotcha. That's great. Well, again, we appreciate all that information. Um, if you don't mind, we're going to take a little break. And maybe okay. after this uh, announcement, we'll uh, get back to some other questions. Very good. good. Great. Thank you very much. Did you find the flashlight and the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Visit ready.gov. All right, welcome back. Again, I am Tom Hayes, Director of Customer and Community Relations for New Jersey Natural Gas Company and uh, current President of the Board of Directors here at SCAN. And I have two wonderful guests with me uh, here. Uh, we're talking about uh, disaster relief efforts. Uh, we have uh, Chris McNiff, who's uh, the Public Information Officer for FEMA, and also uh, Gary Colton, who's the Public Information Officer for the SBA. Again, thank you and welcome back. Thank you. Um, before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, different different uh, areas that you're both involved with, mm -hmm. and one of the topics that was mentioned briefly was insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so, Gary, I had a question for you about insurance. Um, should people wait to apply uh, for loans until their insurance has settled? 
You know, that's the automatic thought is I'm going to wait till my insurance settlement comes. Right. But in fact, that, in, that may take several months. And typically the period to apply for loans following a disaster is limited to a, a window. It may be several months, but it, it's limited. And oftentimes insurance hasn't settled by the time that uh, that, that window closes. Right. So what people need to do, they don't have to wait to file for the SBA loans uh, until their insurance settles. If we can approve them for a loan, we actually can start lending them money <laughs> while they're waiting for that settlement. Mm -hmm. And then we will, uh, we will make that money available to them. When the insurance actually settles, we'll use that settlement to pay the loan down so that it, they end up with as little debt as possible as a result of the storm. Okay. So okay. that's a, it's, it's a flexible program that allows them to uh, start rebuilding oftentimes before they could from insurance. I see, okay, very good. Um, and then also for Chris, there's the advisory base flood elevations. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you tell me a little bit about what that means, and you know, I guess describe that. that. Sure, it's it's a it's a mapping process that we've um, that we undertook before Sandy hit, uh, we being FEMA, mm -hmm. uh, and that the the maps for coastal communities in New Jersey really hadn't been updated since about the mid 1980s. Okay. Um, so we with with the better technology that we have now. We, we, we were remapping these areas to where we could come up with a better understanding of what the risk is in a lot of these communities. Um, and we were in the process of redoing these maps when Hurricane Sandy hit. Wow. Um, so we felt as, as the federal government that in, it would be very important to come out with these advisory base flood elevations to let people know what we had come up with so far so it could aid in a lot of people's rebuilding efforts. Um, in that uh, a, lot of, a lot of the elevations in some of these communities are going to be raised. So people who have had substantial damage to their homes and are going to be looking to rebuild, um, it was important to note that we, we felt that we need to get those elevations out to where people who are rebuilding will know where we feel the new base flood elevation is. Uh, and let people build up to those specifications. Again, it's a whole process. It goes from advisory base flood elevations, wh wh which we have now, which are, is what, the, what they mean as advisories, to where we'll come out with preliminary maps uh, around the summertime, and then that will kick off a year to about an 18-month regulatory process mm. where we'll hear comments, uh, take appeals, uh, and then post in the Federal Registry, and then about a year to 18 months from now, um, these maps will go live to where they'll transition to flood insurance rate maps wow. to where now the National Flood Insurance Program will rate uh, their premiums and, and what they do off of these maps. Um, and again, and it'll be, again, these, the, the federal government provides recommendations for local communities on what the base flood elevations are, mm -hmm. and it'll be up to these local communities to, uh, to take that in, accept them, and then regulate off of them because it actually is the local community that, that does regulate off these maps. Mm -hmm. um, and once they do accept them, then you know, then that becomes the, they become a participatory community in the in the national flood insurance program. Wow. Um, so it's you know, with these maps, it's very important for people to understand that once these maps do go live in about a year to 18 months, they will have profound implications on on insurance. And that, I um, mean, it's, it's, you know, I know it's a very hot button issue now, but the common theme is that the, the, the higher you build, the less you'll pay. Um, and, and it will be in the future that if you're at or below base flood elevation, it's going to be extremely expensive. So what we're encouraging people is to, is, is to, build, is to build higher. Right. As, as, as the, the less risk you have, the less in, in, in insurance premiums you'll pay. Right. Wow. So that's, so that's interesting. I hear that you know, being kicked around a lot. Right. Um, but the time frame is also interesting. So it, it's going to take a year to 18 months. So that's just the regulatory process that, right. that we follow. And then it has to go to the townships, individual municipalities, for them to, I guess, basically ad adopt, that, ad right. adopt those, right? 
Um, does a municipality necessarily have to adopt that? I mean, I imagine they don't, but it just makes sense that they do, right? Because it's really going to affect the in insurance rates and all that. If right, that, right. You know, but I mean, but we've, you know, in these maps, we've been very conservative in, in, in both our elevations and in zones that we've, whether, whether it's a coastal V zone, which means a velocity zone, or a coastal A zone, which means a high risk flood zone. Mm -hmm. And those two the, implicate the nature of the construction on how, how you rebuild in a coastal V zone a lot of times there needs to be a space to where the water can, can come on can come in and out of the, you know under the structure to where you're okay. to where there there is certain wave action that could you know hit the home whether you're right on the beach right. um, but in but in but in rebuilding um, people should look at these advisories um, and and know what their risk is mm. uh, and and just know that in the future you know it's going to it's going to have big insurance implications. So if somebody's home currently wasn't damaged by say Sandy the storm right. um, and then these codes come into, into to play right. what happens if they're just if they're too low it doesn't matter whether they're there they refurbished or built new and didn't uh, obey those or didn't pay attention to those rules right. their insurance is going to be affected right? Right ultimately they will have to elevate yes. Right okay okay good to know. Um, also, this hazard mitigation grant program. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Right, and this is a this is now this is a grant program that's um, that where we're 15 percent of the total federal cost from Hurricane Sandy will go to New Jersey State Hazard Mitigation Office, uh, and the, and these will be grant funds that will be used uh, to mitigate around the state certain communities to where to where there's a, whether it be neighborhoods that need to elevate. Um, whether there will be uh, homes within neighborhoods that look, will look to be acquired or different mitigation projects such as seawalls and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's important to note that these, these plans and projects come from local municipalities who okay. will then turn petition and apply to the State Hazard Mitigation Office. So individuals, when, they, when individuals in a certain community are interested in applying for these funds, they apply through their local community whether it be their floodplain management office or just through the town hall or however the local community has it set up. But it has to come through these local communities who then in turn ap uh, apply to the state mitigation office. And the state mitigation office, you know, dealing with a finite pot of money, mm -hmm. will, will in turn prioritize as to where they, where they feel their money is best spent, mm, essentially. Okay. Um, but we do, we do encourage you know, anybody in all communities who feel that they, you know, they, they, they are interested in having work done is to work with their local community to get a plan in place to submit to the state mitigation office. So they would check with their local um, community and uh, municipality, whatever it might be, right? Right. And ask them about how they fill out those up applications or what do they need to do to get kind of moving with that process, right? right? And, yeah, or, or just express their interest in right, having, so okay. you know, and then the local community will, what, will, will submit a letter of intent. Okay. Uh, and then that'll come to the state mitigation office and then and, and the state of New Jersey will look at these and say, okay, yes, this, this is what we need. However they decide mm -hmm. to do it, okay. you know. Um, but again, it's 15% of the total federal cost of, of, of what's gone into Hurricane Sandy that will go to this pot of money that can be distributed however the, the state prioritizes to mitigation projects uh, within the state. Okay. So that could be an individual with their, uh, an issue with their home they're concerned about or it could be a business as well? Sure. Right? Or now how about the municipality itself? Could they use some of those funds to do something for you know, I don't know, let's say their beachfront facility got it wiped could, out. Say or, for example it could be a seawall. Mm -hmm. that, okay. pr that protects uh, that protects uh, uh, you know a particular ocean avenue like we have in Seabray. Sure. And, okay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. And speaking of, of town, are, are, do you guys have uh, the, the towns that you feel were affected most uh, on your radar? I know, like the Bayshore area was, like say the the Keensburg area, Union Beach, and and, and the like. Um, Seabright being another one. Uh, I think they they typically you know get hit pretty hard in the in, in most right. storms. Right. Um, and then I think Manasquan was another area right. that got hit pretty hard. Are there any other towns that you you think in the uh, Monmouth and well, uh, certainly in Ocean County, there's there's tons, right? right? So right. there's the um, whole seaside we call the seaside peninsula, right. Long Beach Island. Um, any other areas that that you that come to mind that were really hit very hard? Well, I think on the uh, even on the mainland side of of in Brick and in Tom's River, a lot of those communities 
uh, took in a lot of water, water from the lagoon. Right, right. Um, So I'm sure they'll be looking at some of those communities. But again, it's a lot of those communities with, you know, rep repeated flooding incidents. Right. Um, and they'll look at and they'll, and they'll say, listen, you know, we really want to mitigate against this. Right. Or we've got, you know, certain amount of homes maybe on a river. That, mm -hmm. have, that have flooded repeatedly over the years, and maybe right. there's a there's an acquisition uh, program that can be put in place there, so where you know with with the local homeowner, um, they'll look to acquire the home, raise the home, and then that home goes back to being green space. So essentially, right. you're giving giving the the land back to the river, right? And since the river has repeatedly tried to take it right. over a number of years, so, that that's that's so then nothing maybe. gets developed there again, right? So. And hopefully the homeowner gets kind of what their but value it's, of the property is. Uh, yeah, it's all based it on, you know, fair market rate before the storm. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great to know. Yeah, because <clears> obviously there are areas that were never touched by flood waters before, and, and this has really, you know, yeah. blown those areas out, out of the water, so to speak. But right. It's, it's but it's going to be, there's going to be some difficult decisions to make. I mean, because right. there is, as I said, there is, a, there, there is a pot of money, but it's a finite pot of money. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and then that the state is really going to have to prioritize to where they feel that their funds are are most needed at this time to prevent against further events. Right. That's great. Jeez. Really, it's for, for those of us in New Jersey, we're so used to helping in other areas because there's been so many disasters in other areas. And to actually be in the middle of it, and in our particular area in Monmouth Ocean County, have just really been devastated by, the, by these, right. this, this storm. And it's really been incredible. But uh, you know, to really live it now and, and see all the different pieces uh, of, of what goes, you know, into this. And again, I know neither of you gentlemen are actually from this area. So, um, so Gary, where did you, you come from to, to get in here for? for I'm actually so? based out of Sacramento, California. Okay. And do you do this so a lot? You travel all over? I, the, I work full time for Small Business Administration, and I travel typically in the west, western part of the United States. We kind of divide the country on the Mississippi River. Okay. But in major disasters on either side, when they have a lot of impact, people come across and we work where the, where the need is. That's great. And Chris, you're a little more local, I think. Right? Yeah, I mean, I live in New York City, but I okay. work with uh, FEMA's disaster response. And um, again, like, like Gary, I've, you know, whenever there's a need, I've worked tornadoes in, in Tennessee and flooding in Montana and hurricanes in Texas. So it's yeah. uh, one of these things where... Where you get where wherever there's a there's something so an event's occurred, we, right. we head out to see what we can do. That's mm -hmm. great. It's really really wonderful. And if, if you don't mind, can you give us a little bit more of your contact information again, just to make sure folks have it? Sure. Yes. Um, our, our 800 number is 1-800-621-3362, and that's our general registration line. So if uh, if anybody hasn't registered, um, you know that is our registration line, or at disasterassistance.gov. And one other uh, piece of information I'll give out since we were talking about the advisory-based flood elevations is that people can look up their individual address at region2, numerical2, coastal.com. And there they'll find what zone they've been mapped into and what their elevation is. Great. Very good information. Thank you. And Gary, your and contact? Our contact is 1-800-659-2955 or the SBA website, www.sba.gov, and follow the disaster assistance links. Okay, that's great. Well, again, I really want to thank you both for all your time and efforts. And, you know, even through the state, through the governor's office, it's really, uh, I think most of us in New Jersey are, are, are pleased to see the response and see that, you know, a lot of folks are, are, are around this. Uh, but it is tricky and it's timely. It takes time to get through a lot of this. As you mentioned, a, a year to 18 months with just the flood mapping and all that. It's, it's not an overnight kind of process to get everything back in order. Um, and there's a lot of groups and a lot of wonderful people from all over the country, a lot of volunteers. Uh, you know, I've seen it through the long-term recovery uh, committees and groups in, in the area that there are a lot of people helping out, and it's really a beautiful thing. And again, on just behalf of myself and the folks here at SCAN, we want to thank you for taking your time to, to be here with us and uh, really uh, share that very important information. So we uh, really want to thank you very much again, uh, both uh, Chris and, and Gary, for your time. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get all this done and in a short amount of time and beyond. So thank you again very much. Thank right. you. Thanks, okay. Sir. Take care.